So in this video, I want to talk about steroid hormone synthesis in the adrenal cortex. And as I go through this, you'll notice I show all the different structures and the enzyme names and some of the details. Uh, but I don't show the stereochemistry in the structures because it just gets really complicated if I want to show that. And it's not really super important for understanding what's going on anyway. Um, on the same token, as far as not wanting it to look super complicated, I also don't show the uh, coenzymes in each of the reactions. Uh, but it's worth noting that lots of um, NADPH and uh, molecular oxygen molecules are, are used um, by, by the enzymes because the enzymes are cytochrome P450 mixed function oxidases. And of course, mixed function oxidases use molecular oxygen as well as NADPH. And we're talking about reductive biosynthesis here, so it makes sense that we're using NADPH. That that P, there we go. Okay, cool. Now, I've got a little slice of the adrenal gland shown here. And the adrenal gland is actually two glands. There's uh, the adrenal medulla kind of shown here in the middle, uh, which we're not gonna really talk too much about um, in this uh, video. The adrenal medulla is sort of associated with the, the catecholamines like norepinephrine and epinephrine. Um, but I'm not, like I said, I'm not gonna really talk about that too much. Um, the rest of this kind of shown in these different shades of pink here, that is the, uh, the adrenal cortex, okay? And that's what we're gonna be talking about. And so what I wanna do is kind of zoom in on the adrenal cortex and the different layers of it. So let's like kind of zoom in. So that yellow sort of exterior is the capsule. That's just kind of what the adrenal gland is um, sort of inside of, right? In that capsule. Now there's uh, three layers that I'm concerned with. The, the outermost layer, right, sort of here, in that darker pink is the zona glomerulosa. Otherwise we're gonna otherwise call it the ZG. Um, I'm, I'm probably just gonna say glomerulosa. But the glomerulosa, the zona glomerulosa is gonna be important in making mineralocorticoids. Okay, so this one's gonna be important in making, um, it makes mineralocorticoids. Okay, and that's mostly gonna be its thing. Now this, uh, this next layer here, the sort of in the lighter pink, um, that's gonna be the zona fasciculata. That's kind of in, in between the other two layers, um, or ZF. And that's going to be important for uh, mostly for making um, uh, glucocorticoids. Okay, that's going to be making glucocorticoids. Okay, uh, though it can also make androgens as well. So I'll put androgens here, but primarily glucocorticoids. So I'll put androgens kind of in parentheses. Uh, and then the, the innermost layer is the, the again shown in the kind of like the dark portion. That's the zona reticularis, and that's gonna be mostly important for making, um, makes androgens, okay? Male sex steroids. Um, but it can also make uh, glucocorticoids. Okay, so mainly mineralocorticoids, glucocorticoids, and androgens, okay? Now, um, let's actually get into the reactions. So, we're making steroid hormones, and steroid hormones are steroids. And so they come from um, cholesterol, because of course cholesterol provides the steroid nucleus, right? The sort of um, A, B, C, D ring combination uh, that is necessary um, to build all these different steroids. And so um, cholesterol though is not really committed to steroid hormones that this is specifically. Um, it can give rise to all different types of steroids. And of course also steroid hormones is a subset of steroids. But um, like I said, it's not committed to steroid hormone synthesis. Well, what we have to do um, in order to commit to making steroid hormones is create this molecule down here, pregnenolone. And that's gonna, that can be made in all three of the, the zonas of the adrenal cortex. Um, and that's going to be done by cholesterol side chain cleavage enzyme, also called desmolase. Okay, so this is an important enzyme here. Okay. Okay. Um, and you'll notice what it does, and I'm actually gonna show the numbers on the, the cholesterol here, as well as all the other molecules. Um, that, that enzyme is gonna remove the six, carbon, six carbons from this chain out here uh, from cholesterol. And when it removes six carbons, you're gonna end up going from a 27 carbon molecule to a 21 carbon molecule. And um, we're also gonna take carbon number 20 and, um, and oxidize it to a carbonyl, okay? So that's all gonna be done by that side chain cleavage enzyme or desmolase to give pregnenolone. And 
pregnenolone, once that's made, that's basically committed to producing steroid hormones specifically. It's the 21 carbon precursor to steroid hormones, okay? Now, since we're talking about the adrenal cortex, this enzyme being catalyzing the rate limiting or committed step of, um, of steroid hormone synthesis is uh, regulated. It's specifically uh, stimulated by adrenocorticotropic hormone or ACTH, which comes from the anterior pituitary. And that of course is stimulated by, um, it's, it's stimulated to be made and released from the anterior pituitary by corticotropin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus, okay? Um, cool, so now it's also worth noting that um, LH can also stimulate uh, the desmolase, but lutein, LH or luteinizing hormone um, is important in the gonads, okay? Not here in the adrenal cortex, which is why I drew it in a different color uh, to kind of indicate that. It specifically stimulates the theca cells, the theca, the theca cells, um, in, uh, the ovaries in females, um, and the Leydig cells in, um, the testes of males. Okay. But once we have this reaction happen, again, it can happen in any of the zones, we get pregnenolone and we can basically committed to steroid hormone production, uh, in the cortex. Okay. And of course, again, I don't know if I mentioned it, but adrenal corticotropic hormone stimulates the growth of the adrenal cortex, as well as the um, synthesis of, and release of steroid hormones from the cortex, right? So sometimes I'll just say it'll stimulate the growth and secretory activity of the adrenal, adrenal cortex, okay? So now we're gonna kind of go through each of the zones separately to kind of see what steroid hormones were made there. So let's start in the zone of glomerulosa. So we've already shown making pregnenolone. So let's scroll down a bit and see the next steroid that's made. So we can see here that we've got progesterone. Okay, so what happened here going from pregnenolone to progesterone? Um, well, this is going to be catalyzed by 3 beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase isomerase, sometimes called 4,5-isomerase uh, out here. It's not just isomerase, and that should, that'll make sense in just a second. Um, but uh, this enzyme name will actually make sense because um, carbon number 3, 3-beta three hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase, car carbon number 3 has this hydroxyl group, and that's oxidized. So... Uh, it's telling you where that dehydrogenase reaction is occurring. Um, so that's the oxidation there. And then the 4 or 5 isomerase, this double bond here between carbons 5 and 6, is moved to to be between carbons 4 and 5. So hence the 4 or 5 isomerase there. So basically it turns the carbon 3 alcohol to a carbonyl, and it moves the double bond from between 5 and 6 to 4 and 5, hence the 4 or 5 isomerase. So now we have progesterone. Now what? The next reaction is going to make 11 deoxycorticosterone and this is gonna be done by 21 alpha hydroxylase. And by the way, before I keep going, you'll notice that I have these uh, alphas and betas in parentheses and that's because sometimes you, you may or may not see those, okay? You might just see 21 hydroxylase. You might even see something different than what's shown here. Uh, mostly you should see the same thing, but um, that refers to the stereochemistry, which I'm not showing here, but um, I figured I'd just mention that in case you began to freak out about that, which hopefully you probably wouldn't. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, progesterone is turned into 11 deoxycorticosterone by 21 alpha hydroxylase, and this, name, this enzyme name makes sense because um, carbon 21 up here is gonna have um, a hydroxyl group attached. Perhaps I should use a different color just to kind of make it clearer. Yeah, so 21 at that position, we're adding a hydroxyl group. So that name should make sense. And that gives us 11 deoxycorticosterone. Now, 11-deoxycorticosterone, uh, or DOC, or DOC, um, this is the first mineralocorticoid that we're making, and this is specifically a weak mineralocorticoid. Okay, it's not a strong one, but it is a mineralocorticoid nonetheless. Okay. Then we have 11-beta-hydroxylase. That's going to add a hydroxyl group at the 11 position to give corticosterone. So 11-deoxycorticosterone uh, is just corticosterone with out the um, uh, hydroxyl group at the 11 position, okay? Um, but now this is also a mineralocorticoid. Again, though, it's a weak one. It's a weak mineralocorticoid, okay? And then we're gonna turn corticosterone into aldosterone with the 18-alpha hydroxylase, also known as um, aldosterone synthase. And I think that's probably the more important name to know. 
Um, but at the 18 position, we go from just having this methyl group to having uh, an aldehyde. So it's not really adding a hydroxyl group. And if it was added initially as a hydroxyl group, it was oxidized to that aldehyde. Um, but aldosterone synthase, the ald and aldosterone uh, refers to that aldehyde. So um, now aldosterone is actually a strong mineralocorticoid. Okay, so that's going to be uh, pretty important. So we added um, that uh, that carbonyl at the 18 position, and we made aldosterone. Now, something that's really important to know about aldosterone synthase is that it's specific to the zone of glomerulosa. It's only in the glomerulosa. Okay, so that's super important to recognize here, and that means that only the zone of glomerulosa can make aldosterone. Okay, so this is unique to the zona glomerulosa. Okay, now aldosterone, of course, being a mineralocorticoid, um, stimulates sodium reabsorption um, and potassium secretion and um, proton sec excretion. Um, if I said secretion, I meant excretion. Sorry about that. Uh, but anyway, this is happening um, at the distal tubule, um, distal tubule and co co collecting duct in the kidney. Um, collecting duct in the kidney. And uh, of course, that's important in uh, increasing blood pressure, right? Because the sodium reabsorption eventually leads to um, uh, water retention, right? So we have increased water and that'll increase blood volume and that'll eventually be important in increasing blood pressure. And that actually relates to something that's actually pretty important. And that is the fact that angiotensin, angiotensin two, which is a molecule that's really important in increasing blood pressure, actually stimulates this specific enzyme, aldosterone synthase. Okay. In fact, that's one of the ways that it actually contributes to um, increasing blood pressure. It stimulates the production of aldosterone, which of course uh, triggers sodium ion reabsorption and water retention as a, as a sort of consequence and uh, eventually increasing blood pressure as a consequence. Okay. So that's important to recognize there. Cool. So, but again, though, the aldosterone synthesis is unique to the zona glomerulosa. Cool. So that's what's going on in the zona glomerulosa. Now let's look at the fasciculata.